Okay, this lesson for the Cornet Project class, other than this being a sound audio check, is we'd like to look at what we call church prevalence, the prevalence of the ecclesias. It's interesting because if you notice, there's this historical trail of blood, and we'll be talking about lordship salvation primarily because you would think it would be consistent. And of course, this is riddled with... Uh, anachronistic errors, as some have said, who've evaluated it, you know, today with our computers and all of our resources and the data we can now freely gather. I'm certain if you were in a history class, uh, as my son had studied history and there's several textbooks on how to actually do research, you could find a lot of anomalous, uh, fallible data, I'm certain. Interesting, though, is if there is such a thing, we should be able to take the Koine text and look at it and see if there's a consistent expression of lordship because, you know, we all hear lordship salvation. Notice few speak of lordship regeneration and sell even fewer discuss the implication of salvation. So if we're talking about Christ's lordship as the head of one of his ecclesias, for example, or like the good shepherd over one of his flocks, and as he said, he would build, edify his definitive, it's the definite article there, his definitive kind of church, and that church would not be powered down. That's this word here. For those of you studying the languages, you notice this preposition kata is in here, and it in direction means down. Here, the idea of powering down, he said it would not be powered down and then in Galatians, fruit of the Spirit, now that's written to the ecclesias in Galatia. So that's a church letter as well. And this word makrothemia in Galatians 5, 22, uh, this is, uh, well, you hear about um, perseverance of the saints, uh, preservation, some banter, perseverance or preservation, and then the prevalence. So, we have prevalence. Jesus said uh, nothing would prevail against his church. So, excuse me. We have the prevalence of the church. So Jesus, this would be expected then. We would see that from the time of Christ that it would prevail throughout even into a country like ours, the United States of America today, where really we don't have any consequence, negative consequence for being the ecclesia. We have, well, I, we have students, members of our congregation, multi-degree professionals, educators, scientists, um, entrepreneurs, very successful, all have the computers and all the data. So, and really there's no reprisals for us thinking, studying, assembling together faithfully, which is what the ecclesia does. That's how we worship. We assemble together under the headship of Christ, truly Christ's body. And really, nobody cares. Nobody's out to get us. And even people out there that have logged on to our website, it, for, for purposes for which it wasn't intended, you know, they give us this negative or vitriolic or, oh, you said something about so-and-so. Actually, we don't say something about someone as people want us to, we just evaluate what they say and compare it to the scriptures. And that's how we learn. It's how we teach, especially since people come our way from all types of backgrounds. And it can really, sorry, excuse me. It can really be um, difficult. So we're studying and we see that it's impossible that anything would power it down. Uh, we have this long suffering. So we can say uh, that's a word for Perseverance. Perseverance, there we go. And then this is preservation. This is from Tereo. You remember that word in the Great Commission? Tereo. This is the perfect passive participle. Ones who having been preserved are always being preserved. I usually translate it kept. So we have preservation. So we really, we have these three working here together and we have the purpose, which certainly is impossible if uh, Christ would say, 
that if Christ would say uh, that there was something that could power it down, what would it be? He doesn't indicate that. So power down. Here's the ecclesia. Here's that word. Those of you who want to study it. Because remember, you'll hear a lot of people. I've, I've even uh, addressed the fact there was some type of uh, Baptist website. I'm not sure what kind they were. I think they're Reformed or 1689 London Baptist. But anyway, they wrote some blog articles about mopping up the trail of blood. So that was very uh, derogatory, disrespectful. I mean, these people actually bled. Now, you can place the line any way you want. Apparently, people do. People uh, live out their lives through the way of salvation in the Lutheran Church. That's actually a book I recently purchased. So they found the way of salvation through the Lutheran Church, some through Calvinism. Some even say Calvinism is the gospel, yet the gospel is infallible and Calvinism is quite fallible. So there is no, <laughs> no one is justified by Calvinism, justified by faith. We're justified out from the faithfulness of Jesus. So let's go on and see if this can hold up because Jesus said, call it, oh, he came to call Call, you remember that? That's a transliteration. C A L. You can see that. K A L. Hamartalus, that's that word sinners. You see that negative alpha privative and then mart witness. And in this case, this would be those who were devotees to sin. And he said he didn't call the righteous those that don't need repentance. And that would be those that were already, who had already trusted. Listened and learned, that is, learned from the prophets, as John chapter 6 says. And it says here, um, those that came out, well, that's the, what this is, the ekkale. And then here's mathetos, plural, disciples. You see that word, uh, M-A-T-H, math. It's ordered, reasonable, rational, concrete, incremental, developmental, not pathological, emotive, irrational, episodic, things like that. You know, like this big scatter chart above it. It's all scattered. Well, it says that Jesus and his disciples, that is the former disciples of John, baptized more disciples than John. So here's these. So we have one, the called of the category sinners. They became disciples, the ones that the ecclesia, that is, those that answered, then they baptized these disciples. So there's baptizo. There we go. So let's put that here. Our board's getting messed up. So from these called disciples who had been baptized, then we had ek, again, legomai. That's election where Jesus reasoned out from them 12. Here's the word 12. Now you'll notice that Election today really is void of any relationship to the ecclesia, which is really strange because uh, you really wouldn't have a situation. So people that came out were the ones they baptized. They baptized these disciples who repented and then reasoned out. And that's the 12 here. So I'm. I don't know how else to just say it, but whatever lordship is today, it seems to be such a subjective assertion and people seem to be so, um, I guess it incites a lot of reactions, but it really doesn't. I mean, I really don't need this chart, except if I want a collection of historical names and identities, these people certainly didn't interact and collaborate. Some of them were fleeing persecution, just as we know. Uh, our nation being founded. You can go and look at the large murals on the wall in our nation's capital. Well, those who came here and even have copies of the Bible, Geneva Bible, or the Bibles they were carrying. For example, you might find people running from the King James uh, of England, for example, any state religion, state established religion. But it certainly, this is not talking about state religion here. So when people really get into that diminutive, caustic, abrasive, or despise, belittle the reality of people who were not affiliated with state-supported, state-sponsored. You remember in the United States, there is no church 
of the United States, like Church of Rome, that would be Catholic. Church of Geneva, that would John Calvin, I suppose. And then, of course, Church of England. So all of them identify with the state, like the Islamic state, Jewish state. There's no such. See, so we talk about the nation, the state of Israel in the Middle East. That's, again, now they are against Christ. It's actually illegal for us to go there and preach the gospel. Missionaries are not allowed there working. Now I'm certain someone's preaching there. It's just, but now this kind of got out of hand as it's, it's much as it's really hard to take someone seriously when lordship doesn't uh, relate to the reality of the ecclesias because there are people apparently who can say lordship salvation and it doesn't include their participation in the ecclesia where assembling together as the body of Christ truly 100% his body under the headship of Jesus is not even a factor so how uh, lordship is advocated by people that have a multivariate expression of ecclesiology. It seems that lordship stops for many people right at the coming out. They don't. They they say they they have a mystical call. That is, it's not necessarily a preacher preaching. It's not necessarily the work of a commissioned church. These twelve were sent out, uh, sent forth, like the Latin word missio missionaries sent out and then they were commissioned of course you remember paul went to in the letter to the church in ephesus where we saw the first person plural us chose us in christ jesus prior to the knockdown and katabola and establishment of a kind of order that would be the new testament ecclesia kind of order that's only known in the ecclesia so Whatever all this is that just continues to just go and go and go and differentiate, differentiate. It's, so, it's such a hyper-differentiated fact now that no one can even enumerate, uh, much more uh, consider identifying and accounting for all the fragments. But again, this trail of blood, I, I found it very interesting because wouldn't this be what lordship looks like? I mean, wouldn't we find consistent... Uh, consistency, that is consistent opposition by the state, consistent opposition by the established religions that are sponsored by the state, wouldn't we find opposition by those who do not want the reality of a king, Jesus, as the gospel itself says, that Herod was troubled by the announcement by the of the wise men who came to worship the king who was born. So he's threatened. So that's strange because we can't even like for us where i pastor for example i really about the only persecution i've known has been from people who can't spell the word persecution so i mean we live in the shadow of the largest c-130 base in the world here in jacksonville arkansas so i'm really not i mean it's hard to appreciate but for being in the ecclesia and knowing the implications of the high honor of being truly Christ's body under his headship and to be here in this lifetime under all these circumstances, uh, global civil unrest, global pandemic, global war on terror, uh, apocalypse everywhere being announced and uh, social media, every type of social media platform all converging, cognitive overload. And yet here we are. Uh, here gathered together and again why is what we are bothering people well a lot of people are bothered because if someone's teaching something the way it was taught in the bible then what does that say of them but we we don't waste our time just pointing at someone else we came out we're pointing to one person jesus the christ so your language can help you if you just set it up take this word kata kati Ski Susin, well, you notice that third person plural there. And the um, Usin, you notice that? Macrothemia is a noun. You notice this reduplicated stem and your sign of the uh, perfect tense. And it's passive, of course. And you notice this, Minois, Minois, plural. So we are ones who having been preserved. But now the purpose, 
just to end in this, the purpose of lordship is the in relation to the ecclesia. And that ultimate purpose of lordship for him to bother to preserve us, to persevere us, and to is to assure that his ecclesia is prevalent is so that the interest of Christ might be served in this lifetime here on this earth as he intended and that is namely his father would receive the glory by Christ Jesus in the ecclesia. So you have a blessed day and listen, you'll be ridiculed by this. There's martyr's mirror. You have to order it. They don't keep that in quote Christian bookstores. It shows persecution by mainline Protestant and Catholic at the same time. It shows a lot of things here that were barbaric. John T. Christian's church histories. Again, when people call your attention to anachronistic errors in this, it's really uh, the second step. We should go here first. Let's go here first and find out, was there a purpose for perseverance, preservation, and prevalence? And yes, it's the glory of God by Christ Jesus. That is what's interesting because if you... I don't even know how people are baptized into Christ if there's no ecclesia, since Ephesians 5.32 says Christ, that is the ecclesia, and they were baptized into Moses, were baptized into Christ. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.